Um, I've done the David Letterman show 18, for 18 years. First eight years, I did it myself. I'd go on and do demos, blow stuff up, try to set them on fire. He'd chase me around, insult me. The usual type of thing you would expect from David Letterman. The last 10 years, I've been training junior high kids to go on the show. So about twice a year, we take five kids to New York, and three of them get to go on and do demos on the show. This is one that we've used. Uh, the kids I work with are junior high. They're, they are brilliant. They're some of the smartest kids in Naperville. And, very, very nice to work with. And uh, they have a better clue about some of this stuff than I do. I teach them the lesson. I write the script for them, for their interactions with Dave. And they really learn the stuff. This one happens to be called the, I'm not going to give you the title, because that'll give away what we're doing. And you don't want to do that in a demo to give it away. So here, Dave, this is from my script. Dave, we have a small beaker inside of a large beaker. And this is a stirring rod, all glass. Okay, I want you to pour, that's what the script says, Dave, I want you to pour the vegetable oil into this small beaker. So let me do that. So Dave is supposed to pour this. We can do this. There we go. Ta-da. And there's some bubbles in there. There's some air bubbles. And you see the glass stirring rod inside the beaker. At least I think you can. I can. Oops, safety glasses on. We're using lesson oil, and this could get slick. Now, thank you. All right, now we're going to pour some more, and we're going to continue to pour it, but this time I'm going to pour it on the edge, and I may have to go for that second bottle. Actually, this is canola oil. That's the important part. Pure canola oil. That's good. Whoa. Did you notice something happening with the beaker? The bubbles will have to go away. That will help. Ooh, the beaker has disappeared. So the title of this is The Disappearing Beaker. And the reason it's disappeared is that the canola oil and the Pyrex have the same index of refraction. So that means that the light goes right through them and isn't bent at all, so you can't see the shape. Now, I know what some of you are saying, OK, Mick, I see the stirring rod. What's the deal with that? Well, the stirring rod is not Pyrex. It's a softer glass. It's a different glass. So it has a different index of refraction. So you can see that in there. Now, that to me is amazing. It's not magic. It's science, if you understand what's going on. Then the second part, which we didn't do on the show, is sometimes called the appearing beaker. Or we can make this beaker appear out of the blue. So you would have to pretend, because I gave them a couple scenarios they could use on the show, you will have to pretend that you don't know there's a beaker in there. So, you know, I'm going to ask you to, you know, pretend you're ignorant. My students are good at that. When <laughs> I ask them to do that. Now, um, I'm going to pour this in. OK, so Dave, let's see if I wrote the script. Dave, we have a magic liquid here. See, it contains only a yellow liquid. I want you to pour this blue liquid into this funnel and watch what happens. By the way, I can't tell what I'm doing here. I think I got carried away. Do you see the beaker appearing out of the blue? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it did. Now, do you, did you notice something else that, uh, let's see, this, this thing you can't see as well, because this glass is also Pyrex, but now there's some blue stuff stuck in it. So you can't see it, so it's going to disappear in the oil. It'll show up in the water. So in this case, between the pirate, because we no longer have everything with the same index of refraction, it appears again. Plus the fact that it's blue, that may have something to do with it too. So this is kind of magic. Now there's a third one that I'm not going to do, but I'll explain to you. We'll consider it a Gedanken experiment. Um, Flynn sells these little beakers that uh, don't have any writing on it or any etching on it, so they'll show up. But, you know, 
I had some made by a glass blower, a bunch of small ones made, so I could do it. This demonstration, what you do is you take a beaker and you, you're in front of your class and you drop it and you break it and you go, look, this is broken, but I've got a magic fluid here. So you've already got one of these beakers in there that's good. So you drop the broken one in and then you pull out the good. Look, it's mended the beaker and the pieces have disappeared, but the other one comes out. I know it's a little hokey, but it's also a little expensive if you do this, which is why we're not gonna do it here because most teachers won't be doing that. Of course, then you'll wanna tell them the truth and talk about the index of refraction and the science that's going on behind that. So this has got a little physics crossover, but still chemists do worry about uh, index of refractions and some of their lab tests, some of their bench tests. 